We now call the Deputy Minister of Public Works, the Honorable Cronin. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Minister, uh, other ministers who are present, Deputy Ministers also present, uh, the Chair of the Portfolio Committee, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, other Honorable Members who are present, uh, and the uh, colleagues in general from the Public Works family, ranging Order, from the ETWP participants through to the head of the Property Management Trading Entity. There's an old uh, Chinese uh, proverb, learn... Order, Honourable Members. Yes. W why are rising? Excuse me, um, on a point of order. Is it parliamentary for the member over there to be taking photos in the house? The one with the beaver on the head? <laughs> she was taking photos. Uh, Honourable Member. I'm not taking the question photos. For that? She was. She lies also. I'm order, or does, does hold on, Honourable Member. I'm not taking photos. Yeah. Anymore. She said it's not taking photos. We'll take her word. Thank you very much. P take your seat. Now is the take your seat, honourable member. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, chairperson. Order I chairperson. hope that I will be given a minute. Order, so order. Sorry, okay. deputy minister. <laughs> chairperson, the uh, member must withdraw. Honourable Adam. Chairperson, the member must withdraw. He's accusing another member of lying. He says she's lying. Um, honourable Paulson, can you respond to that? Have you said so? Have you said she's lying? No, 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 I, I'm, I'm speaking to you, Honorable Paulson. <laughs> what is your response? I saw her take photos and then she denied no, that, it, so that was... No, that is another okay, issue. Okay, I withdraw, she's lying, she's denying it. Okay, thank you very much. Oh. Take your seat Stop for your withdrawal. Can you proceed, Honorable Honorable? Uh, thank you, Chairperson. There's an old uh, Chinese proverb which says, learn to cross the river by feeling the stones. In other words, difficult tasks are not necessarily best accomplished by simply rushing headlong into them. Learn from experience. So let's try and learn from experience going back to the beginnings of public works in the non-racial area, in the democratic area. In the first white paper of 1997, uh, in his foreword, the first post-apartheid minister, uh, Jeff, Comrade Jeff Gadebi, began by saying, and I quote, since its establishment, the Department of Public Works has frequently been treated as a Cinderella department, narrowly confined to its tasks as state property manager and facility maintenance agent. Now, there are many features in the white paper of the 1997 that are still, I think, relevant and important. But it's also interesting to reflect back at how the minister and the administration at that time were framing the question, what is the Department of Public Works? Because it's quite obvious that back then in 1997, the role of being a state property manager was clearly seen as narrow, implicitly routine, and rather boring, making of DPW a Cinderella department. Since then, and many of the contributions have already made this point, we've come to appreciate much, much better the challenging and enormously strategic important role, both from a social, development, and economic perspective, of our core mandate as the Department of Public Works, as the leading custodian of the property portfolio of, uh, of the state's property portfolio, with over 93,000 buildings and some 29,000 land parcels. Two years after that white paper in 1999, Cabinet indeed approved, in principle, the cre creation of a state property agency. But unfortunately, and for several reasons, there was not much progress made. So when Minister Nglesi was first appointed ad as Minister of Public Works in late 2011, he found himself in a department which, quite frankly, was in a state of chaos, in free fall. Uh, there were repeated audit disclaimers, and it was also admired in several very high-profile corruption scandals, among them the Middestadt building leased to the police in Pretoria, and of course the Inkandla matter. On arrival, the new minister, he's no longer new, but when he was new, found two large files on his desk. The one was from the SIU, and the other was from the public protector. There was also a briefing note, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Minister, from the Minister of Finance, which called on the Department of Public Works to fulfill its mandate more effectively, noting, one, that there was massive strategic instability in the department because of, in principle, because of a high turnover of DGs, of ministers, deputy ministers, and so on, as well as the non-existent of a complete asset register. We now have a complete immovable asset register, which is why, Honorable Fig, we can say, yes, there are X number of unused properties. Some years ago, we didn't even know that. So this has been an important part of the turnaround. The briefing, of, uh, the, the briefing from the Minister of, uh, uh, Minister of Finance at that time further observed quite correctly 
that all of this was both the product of and a facilitator for endemic corruption in the, within the department. And so from early 2012, Minister Nglesi launched a major turnaround and subsequent stabilization program within the department. And this is a journey, a crossing of a river, if you like, undertaken, by the way, together with successive parliamentary portfolio committees. Because this is not just something we're doing on our own as the department. We are working with portfolio committees. I'm very pleased to see the Honorable uh, Drea present, who was here in that process, and I think um, offered constructive criticism, but also acknowledged that pro progress was being made. Sometimes, I'm not saying that things haven't improved from the DA point of view, because there's some good uh, DA members, but um, sometimes there's a lack of perspective and a depth of understanding of the process, difficult process, the difficult crossing of a river that has been underway. Um, so the Honorable Sitoli has also been with us uh, right through since uh, the, that, the, the previous, uh, previous parliament, as well as important parliamentary staff, and one would like to acknowledge their engagement, their constructive criticism, um, and discussion and debate, which have contributed to this process of turnaround and stabilization. And the particular achievement, I think, is the ring fencing and establishment of a property management trading entity to address our core uh, mandate as a department. But of course, advances across a difficult river also bring their own challenges. So going back to Minister Khadebe's uh, forward to the 1997 white paper, after expressing discomfort with the supposed narrow property role of the Department of Public Works, Minister Khadebe in the next sentence wrote, but after the first democratic elections in South Africa's history, President Nelson Mandela announced a new cabinet and Public Works was charged with a bold and ambitious project to inculcate into all of its traditional functions the basic principles of a national public works program and to implement a community-based public works program. We can recognize here the seeds of what became in, 20, in 2004 the launch of the expanded public works program uh, in South Africa. Today, the EPWP is the one of the largest and one of the most consistently sustained public employment programs anywhere in the world. But if DPW came to a better appreciation and grew belatedly into its core state property management function, in the case of EPWP, the program has far outgrown the department, uh, its point of origin. With all municipalities in South Africa, every single province, and many, many national departments all being active implementers of EPWP programs. This is a great success. Whatever the challenges there may, and there are, uh, it's a global pioneering contribution <laughs> when the very future of work is under discussion in places like the International Labour Organization, uh, amidst growing job precariousness with a fourth industrial revolution and so forth. But there are two major symptoms of this great growth of the EPW and diversity of the EPWP, which members of the Portfolio Committee and the Auditor General have raised with us. The first relates to the accuracy, accuracy of reporting on work opportunities. It is a matter which has been raised also by the Auditor General with, with adverse findings over a couple of years now. Now, the basic position of the Department of Public Works is that our Director General, okay, can't possibly be the accounting officer for every single work opportunity scattered through all municipalities in South Africa, scattered through provinces and many different line departments. We, we are collecting the data, but the data comes from a variety of other implementers. Um, and so we are saying, but the, we, we are still in a discussion and we, there's not complete agreement with the AG and the uh, Accountant General on this matters. Which is not to say that the DPW must fold its arms and simply blame other accounting officers. We are indeed expending considerable time and effort assisting municipalities, provinces, and even national departments in improving their EPWP data capturing and reporting. We are also running all reported participants' IDs through the Home Affairs database, which is where we discover that some have appeared to have died, maybe in the course of the program, but maybe before, and therefore obviously there's fraud in there. We remove them then from our report and accounting of the things. Okay, let me just say, and I agree completely with the Honorable Fig, that the work opportunity target is a problematic one. It's exactly something that we've been said. Let me also remind the Honorable Fig that in, uh, in 2014, during the election campaign, the DA announced that it was going to achieve, if it was elected as the national government, seven million work opportunities. Okay, so you were also committed to a target of work opportunities. But what we discovered, and you're absolutely right, a work opportunity can mean anything from three weeks uh, to a full-time equivalent of 230 days, which we calculate that day. The worst offender, by the way, uh, of 
creating lots of work opportunities of very short duration is the city of Cape Town. Now, I'm, I'm not sure which part of the DA one should blame for that, but I think you should take collective responsibility. <laughs> but it's a problem in general. Okay. We continue, obviously, to engage with the AG around this reporting stuff and how best to ensure clean and accurate reporting, because that's what we want. We all want that. There is, however, a further complication. As the minister has noted, a significant chunk of our medium-term budget allocation, some 7 billion rand, is earmarked for the EPWP incentive grant to municipalities and provinces. And there are three interrelated challenges that have begun to emerge with the incentive grant system. One, there's a growing tendency for the incentive grant to become the entire budget for EPWP programs rather than a top-up, which is what it was intended to be. Secondly, in many municip municipalities, part of the incentive grant is dispersed to individual ward councillors. Okay. And this, in our view, is a grave risk and may account for the allegations and reality, in many cases, of abuse in the recruitment of participants. Let me make it absolutely clear. As a department, we don't care if the ward councillor is ANC, IFP, DA, or whatever. It is fraudulent and corrupt to recruit people on the basis of party membership, on the, on, the, on, on, on the basis of affiliation to this or that faction or whatever. And the third issue, and we've issued recruitment guidelines to this effect, and we, we to the best of our ability, seek to involve, because it, it's, it's a reputational risk to a wonderful program saluted around the world by the International Labour Organization and everywhere else, okay. Right, finally, let me say, a few words about the highly topical issue of expropriation and the expropriation bill. I see that the co-chair of the uh, Constitutional Review Committee is present, which is great, because we intend engaging actively with them. Preach. How many? You still have five minutes to Okay, so I don't have to be to so engage. quick. Okay, so I can take my time. That's good. Okay. So there has been compensation, I'm glad. Although my time was expropriated, I have got some compensation. I'm pleased with <laughs> Now, first of all, the bill is no longer with the department, okay? Uh, it's with Parliament, uh, not with us. But as the original submitters of the bill, we remain very interested and engaged with this issue. And members will remember that after a successful passage um, through the National Assembly in 2016, the bill went to the National Council of Provinces. Unfortunately, in our view, the National Council of Provinces hearings were unduly hurried and vulnerable to a constitutional challenge. And uh, when, when consulted by the president, uh, uh, the former president, Minister Nglesi, on our advice, said that it would be better to resubmit it uh, back to parliament rather than end up in, in the constitutional court with a long, prolonged challenge. Now, of course, having done that, then subsequently, the big debate around expropriation, which is good, without compensation emerged uh, at the ruling party's uh, national conference. It's well known that a decision was taken that in principle uh, the uh, implementation, the possibility of using expropriation without uh, compensation uh, was possible. Other parties have also talked about expropriation sometimes without comprehension, but I think uh, intending with, but anyway, okay. The <laughs> I wasn't referring to the EFF at all, uh, in, in case that was your worry. No, no, okay. Chairperson. So, um, would, would, would the Deputy Minister take a question? Uh, uh, okay, maybe at the end. Question. I think I might have some time, but I'd like to complete what I'm trying to say. But if okay. it's possible, then that would seat. be good. Okay. Now, the, there was the ANC conference, and then, of, of course, here in the National Assembly, um, with at least two parties, I think three parties, or may, and maybe more, supported a resolution which came from the EFF, let's not get into that silly debate, but which was amended by the ANC, uh, and the amended version was adopted, okay, to establish a constitutional review committee to recommend whether or not, okay, this is clear as well, the, the resolution didn't say the constitution must be changed, it said it must investigate whether the constitution needs amendment or not in order to empower the possibility of expropriating without uh, compensation. And the resolution went on to say, in a manner, this is our resolution, okay? In a manner that increases agricultural production, improves so food security, and ensures that the land is returned to those from whom it was taken under colonialism and apartheid. Okay, that's part of the resolution. Important, and I agree with it. In the light of this resolution, it's useful then to remind ourselves of an often forgotten sub-clause in the property clause. 
And that subclause 8, 25 subclause 8, okay, the property clause, which says no provision, okay, which obviously must surely include also the provision requiring that just and equitable compensation must be paid in cases of expropriation. No provision of this section, the property clause, may impede the state from taking legislative and other measures to achieve land, but not just land, water and related reform in order to redress the results of past racial discrimination, provided that any departure from the provisions of this section is in accordance with the provisions of section 36.1. Okay, I'm sorry I'm getting a bit technical, but I think it's imp very important that we, we get on top of these things. Okay, so first of all, note that contrary to what is often said um, or distorted in, from some quarters, the Bill of Rights and the Property Clause is a mandate for dramatic radical transformation. It's not a blockage to it. Okay. Now, 36.1, okay, which is the general limitation clause in the Bill of Rights, reads, the rights in the Bill of Rights, for example, in this case, the right to just and equitable compensation, that right, may be limited, but only in terms of a law of general application to the extent that the limitation, one minute. one minute, okay, is reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society. Okay, so as advocate Tembeka Mluka Itobi has so eloquently ex argued, there would appear to be absolutely no impediment within the Constitution as it stands for, be, for it to be possible to exploit justly and equitably without compensation in certain cases, provided these are clearly defined within the law of general application. And in my view, the, the expropriation bill currently parked with this portfolio committee and the NCOP could serve with some adjustments precisely as such a law of general application. However, let's not preempt the work of the Constitutional Review Committee. I do, however, want to urge, in line with President Ramaphosa's responses in the National Assembly last week, that regardless of our political affiliations, that we engage with this absolutely critical but emotive land debate in a rational and constructive way. Let, not, let none of us be in denial about the terrible legacy of colonial and apartheid dispossession of the black majority. Thank, not thank just you. the indigenous black majority, but those who are the descendants who came as slaves, who came as indentured laborers, because that you, often Deputy gets Minister. forgotten in the thing. So we urge rationality, and but a common commitment, and the as public works, expired. we have an important role to play. Sorry, I can't ask you a question. I'm getting cut Th by this. Thank you very Without much.